Hello everyone. I'm here to explain to you how to create some music and uh, specifically how to add some music to an existing uh, video. And to give you some context, we're going to be looking at this video, which was intended to address the amount of failures that occurred from students who tried to take the psychology class and didn't, didn't pass, so they added some, their, just play a couple of seconds really quick of the music. My psychology 101 class is one of the first classes I take here at SPSU. I teach 1,000 students each semester. That's 2,000 students a year. It's a really big challenge for students coming here, um, especially if you're a first-generation college student. You don't even really... So you can tell that the mood of this, this piece is somewhat serious, because, I mean, as it should be, uh, students aren't passing, and we need to create a, the type of music that uh, connotes this. Um, so, anyway, we open up GarageBand, and <clears throat> we start out with a new project. And the first thing I would recommend is just start out with uh, an empty project. And you're prompted to start with a, a number of given instruments. I would choose a drummer. It's good to start with a drum beat, I'd, I'd say. And um, this left pane is populated with all the different drum options you have. Uh, this was only available after we uh, installed some extra content, which is available free. Um, but we can start out by auditioning how some of these things sound. Let's see. So let's see. Let's try some other ones. Pretty rock and roll-ish. We could also experiment with uh, slowing down the tempo. Maybe let's change it to 90. Make it a little faster. All right. It's something we could work with. We could always change the drums later. Um, so, one of the things that to keep in mind when writing a piece of music is to keep the general, have an idea for what the big form will be, what the, the, overar the overarching uh, big picture of the piece will be. So, a good place to start for a number of film projects is to start small and to grow big, kind of create an arc. So, uh, that, that comes with layering. Uh, it's one way of doing it. So you can start out with a drum beat, you can add in a bass line, eventually you can add in some chords and some little auxiliary hits, percussion or uh, pitch percussion or xylophone or, or something like that. So let's start out by just That's four, that's four measures worth of content. And you could tell that because there's, there's a one, a two, and a three, and a four, and all, the, all those times passed. And I'd say that's a good point to introduce something else. So what we'll do now is we'll go to track, and we'll create, um, we'll click new track. And we'll select one from a software instrument. Now you have many options once again, uh, pianos, clavinets, synthesizers. Let's, uh, let's start with some bass, maybe a fingerstyle bass. Okay, so you notice that the drum track, basically all the work was done for you. Uh, it's just an audio clip, nothing else really needed to be, need to be done. You just, you just select it and it, it's done. With a bass line, you're going to want to create something that create something from scratch where you actually input the notes one by one so there's a little bit of music theory that you need to know in order to do that 
Um, it's helpful to know what a scale is. And I'll show you what a scale is in the context of the the, the MIDI keyboard that the comes MIDI with keyboard the that comes with so. the software. So let's see. You notepad share record edit Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Trying to find that keyboard. Trying to find that keyboard. MIDI keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. It's in window. It's in window. Show keyboard. Show keyboard. There it is. All right. So here you have it. So here you have it. If you go to window and you click show keyboard, show keyboard, you have a key. You have an actual picture of a piano. And you could change, and you the, could the, change the, the range, the low notes, the high notes, notes, and you'll see little numbers, a little symbol C3, C4, C5. C4 is middle C. A little high for a bass line. So let's try with like C, let's start with like C, C2. So, so, so a scale, so a scale, a simple scale to learn is the C major scale. Um, so this is you see that C2 is labeled, and you play all the white keys starting from this C2 all the way to C3. Conveniently uh, on the correlated on, on the keypad. Ah, show musical typing. Ah, show musical typing. Okay. All right. Great. So Great. it actually makes so sense it actually to makes to open sense the, to, to open up the typing. show musical typing uh, mode. So all the notes. Of the so scale all the notes of the scale are right here, and they are right here, and they correspond notes. to all the chordy notes. Chordy keys. Chordy keys. So we'll go up one octave. And um, and um, so what's interesting about so what's this interesting layout, about this layout, this piano layout is this piano layout all is the distances all the distances exactly are not the exactly and the an same. And that's an important thing to understand. Music theory. Music theory. The smallest distance. The smallest um, distance. In order to um, go. In order to go go through the scale with this go through the scale with this go through this octave smallest amount of distance equal distance uh, equal you distance go uh, you would go kind of this way in kind of a zigzag sure. fashion. These are all the half steps. All the half steps. So, so, so we've kind of talked about the so we've C kind of talked scale. about the C major it. scale. You can play it. And it's a good starting point to it's a good experiment. starting point to you know, experiment. You have, you know, a, drum you have track. a drum drum track. Just play him. Just play him. You play him one, you play at, a time, one at a time, on just on every beat. Or you could you could slow it down. Or you could you, you could slow it down. You could play it one every two beats. One every two beats. Or you could or experiment you could with, experiment uh, with different, timings. Uh, so you different experiment timings. With so you could experiment repeating with some notes, not repeating, repeating some notes, repeating not repeating some, some notes. notes. Repeating some notes, not repeating. So whatever you choose, I mean, there's whatever you choose, many I mean, there's there's many options. You could you could, things, you could, you could do but, multiple you things. Know, just but what you, you know, just you record like what you you feel like recording, don't and then don't sweat it out too much. Because you can actually adjust, adjust the, the notes after the fact. So, so let's just experiment. We'll, let's just try, experiment. A little, we'll try a little. I mean, how do you adjust the notes? How do you adjust the notes? How do you adjust the notes after the fact? Well, let's first record what we just. Let's just record some of these test runs by clicking this record by clicking this record button right here. Sliding and the transport, sliding the transport uh, to where you want to start. Uh, to where you want to start. 
We'll give you a four beat count. In. We'll give you a four beat count. In. So, as you can so, see, after, as that, you can see done, after that was done, there's a MIDI clip, that, that, appears a MIDI clip right that appears right here. And all of those notes, and all of those reflected notes are down reflected here grid. down here on this grid. And you can actually hover through each one and kind of recollect what just happened. But let's say, da, 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 da. let's say you want to change this note instead of doing. Instead, let's say you want to da 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 instead of da da. You can change this note right here. Just slide it down. And then you get an option. So there's a lot of flexibility. You could really clean up whatever you want. Um, you could also quantize this, meaning it'll quantize this. It'll It'll round off the values of the notes because we humans can't play as precisely as a computer can play. So we click the Q button to quantize, and we select the, the rounding value we'd like. So let's say eighth notes, because I don't think I was playing anything faster than eighth note. And then I quant select all of them. There we go. Just quantize that. And now it's, it's got some metronomic precision. So there you have it. That's a simple way to input notes and uh, change them after the fact. Um, but let's see. Is this exactly the scale that we would want for this uh, topic? Uh, this topic is somewhat serious. You got to remember that these kids are not passing their class. This video is trying to help, you know, bring this serious issue to attention. So another aspect of music theory is the concept of major versus minor. Now major sounds somewhat happy, minor sounds somewhat sad. So if we go back to our handy dandy keyboard right here, musical typing keyboard, and instead of starting on, well we can still start on C. Notice how before you play every single white key. Let's just play the first five notes of that scale. Now, if you take the middle note and you bring it down a half step, which is just one to the left of it, in a zigzag manner we talked about earlier, you change that middle note to, to that note, all of a sudden it sounds quite sad. And um, so let's try this whole thing again and try to make it with uh, the minor. Base, bass line instead of the major bass line. So let's try that again. And the, the keypads uh, allow you to play all the flat notes, all the black keys as well. So let's see. So you can tell that sounds more serious. It might not be exactly what we want yet, but it's, I think it's closer along the lines in terms of mood. Uh, it's got more of a somber effect. So uh, let's place this bass line where we wanted to earlier, which is, I think earlier we decided, you know, we want to layer this sequentially. You want to you wanna layer things in a sequence where things get more dense over time. That's a good formula for creating a nice arc, uh, nice movement within a musical or visual composition. So we start from the beginning and we hear this in context. Is there a way to add sort of like breakdowns at the end of that fourth measure? 
create a little, yeah, a little drum fill or something? Thing. Yeah. Certainly. Let's see. I'm sure there is. Uh, let's take a look at the options we have. Drum kit. No, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm just curious. Um, I can look at it later. I can, you know where it is. Let's see. Okay. Ah. Okay, so actually, yeah, there's a little option right here that says fills. And the more you raise this knob, the more the loop adds fills near the end of it. So you can adjust how extreme these fills become. So this is, this is with no fills. Let's make this four bars just to be consistent. Now this is with a lot of fills. So, so you can see how that really adds some, you know, some some new dimension, some new life to this uh, this drum track right here. So. Command for duplicating, Josh. Just, just, just Joseph. Sorry. Yeah. Do you know the Do you know the command for duplicating? Copy. Copy. Okay. Let's see. If that works. Select the clip and right click it? And no, I don't think Oh, it has. oh. Yeah, it's just. I'm trying. So I think it did. Oh, it did. It probably it did. Pop, yeah, so it popped it down here. So you have to pick whichever area. So like, let's say you start at five and you can pop it. Oh, so it's putting it at the end of it. Okay. Yeah, so you can like, put hey, it in the end and then you can move it around. Okay, gotcha, cool. Let's copy and you just control command V. Okay. So that's handy. So it's, it's useful once you have something you like to create duplicate copies of something. Um, because everything's essentially gonna be very similar to one another, but there's gonna be little variations. So it's handy to, to kind of use existing material. It's being resourceful. So let's say we have this drum loop that has no fills, because we don't want fills for all the drum loops. Well, let's just drag that over here, this fillless drum loop. OK, so we'll loop. So, let's see, command, good, okay, all right, so now we have this high activity drum loop that leads into this low, less 
activity drum loop and with some bass on top. But let's see. So we have a bass line that walks up a scale. But another thing that we could do, which kind of goes into the theory of chords, is just to have a bass line every, just have a bass note every measure. So you notice how there's a five for the fifth measure, six for the sixth measure, seven, seventh measure, eight for the eighth measure. So instead of having such a high activity bass line, we'll just delete these notes. And um, we'll experiment with a different note on each measure. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Okay. So basically, you, know, you can see how the notes, even though I, I, I repeated some of the notes, they were, you, they were the same note for the entire measure. It creates more space, and that'll actually create the opportunity to add more chords to the bass notes after the fact. So, I want to clean that one up a little bit. Okay, we'll just. Uh, Okay. So we have a little bass loop now that I think we can stick to. It's minor, um, meaning it's, it's in a minor key. And uh, I just basically used the scale we had from before, and I just, instead of playing the notes in order, I spaced the notes out. We can talk more about that later, uh, how that happened. But so, oops. any questions so far? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try to duplicate this whole thing. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So a good thing to know is when you copy and paste something, they appear where the transport slider will be. So if you copy this and you want to paste this, you want to select both of these things and paste it, it'll appear wherever the transport would be. So if your marker's all the way over here, it'll, it'll copy, it'll paste it over here, which is not what we want. So... So now we have a loop of something for another. So we have a drum loop of four bars. We introduced bass after four bars. Maybe we can introduce something else now um, after another four bars. So we'll create a new track. We'll, uh, maybe we'll create a, a, key, a software keyboard instrument. OK, so there's many options. I'm partial to some of these electric pianos myself. Um, they kind of have a softer tone. Uh, you could also go with something like an organ or a synthesizer. Um, in this case, you know, we'll try. But we can experiment. You can always change the instrument after the fact because uh, the notes have already been set, and that's really the most important piece of information. So we'll start out with. A classic, no, 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 no. Start out with a with a classic electric piano. Okay. So the next thing we're going to try to do is we're going to remember the bass notes that we created earlier. Well, I think they were they were A, D, G. C. 
Now, an interesting thing about music theory is there's something called triads. And if you take a note, a bass note, and you play every other note on top of it, you'll get something that sounds nice. So the first note was A, and you play, so you play, you skip a note, and you skip another note. Let's, so that's an A major. That's an A minor, and it's an A minor because of the half steps that uh, it's made of. So just to talk about that really quickly, we talked about half steps earlier. Half steps are just the, the nearest adjacent key from one note to another. So if you were... That's playing every single note, every single half step in order on the piano. Now, in this particular chord, A, C, E, if you count the distance from A to C, you get one, two, three, four. So that's four half steps. Now if you count the distance from C to E, you get one, two, three, four, five. That's five half steps. So if you create a chord with four half steps on bottom and five half steps on top, it's called a minor chord. If you do, if you flip that and you create a chord with five half steps on bottom, one, two, three, four, five half steps, and then four half steps on top, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, that's major. Suddenly you get from major to minor, happy, sad, joyous, kind of creepy or scary. Now, um, so interestingly, if we create, if we play every single other note on the bass notes we starting on the bass notes we created earlier, we'll get a chord that sounds nice compared to the bass notes we had earlier. Which is pretty awesome, you know? We get a lot from a little. Okay, so this is... I don't know what my bass note is. I mean, is there a reading there that tells me what the note is? It, there is. Um, so that's a, that's, that's a good question. So the notes actually, on the MIDI editor, will be described on the piano right here. So this grid reading, it corresponds to this vertical piano that's on the left-hand side. I'll catch you on the flip. So uh, yeah, it's great. If you are familiar with, with how the piano works, then you can, cl you can easily adjust one of these notes. This is on D right now. You can bring it up. Uh, that's not how you do it. Um, let's see. Okay. You could click and drag the notes up and down according to the keyboard right here. So I chose the notes A, A, D, G, C. Now, interestingly, A and D are are five away. One, two, three, four, five in terms of white keys. So are C. So are G and C. Um, in fact, all of these notes are actually five away from each other. So A is five away from D. A G F E D. G, G, F, E, D, C. So they call that a sequence. It's basically you're going down a fifth, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth. You're doing it four times. Ends up working just fine. And that was the logic behind creating this bass line. So falling fifths, they call that. Um, so now let's take the chords. Let's create chords on top of this bass line. And we're going to do that, we're going to make sure that the notes we choose are in the right octave. We don't want the notes to sound really muddy or low. They won't sound def def defined at all. So we'll contrast the low notes of the bass with some notes. Is there a roll for the, the octave above the bass line? Generally, you don't want things to compete with each other. 
So if the bass is down in the low register, you want to have the those low and high. Those low and high. Are like a certain number of octaves depending on what the octave of the bass is. You know, I think that is uh, that's a good question. There certainly are uh, theories on what that what that is, but I would say a good rule of thumb is just use your ear and to decide what register they call the octave that you want your notes to be in. Um, in this case, I'm going to probably choose something somewhere around the middle of the piano. And we can always change it afterwards. It's very easy to, to shift all of the notes up or down an octave uh, using the MIDI editor. So let's try this out and see if this works out. And uh, again, it might be a good idea to practice the notes ahead of time because it's a little strange to look at on a on a on one of these QWERTY keyboards versus on an actual MIDI keyboard. But then again, don't fret because you can always change the notes afterwards. Okay, so I'll just give it my best shot. Whoops. Okay, so we enable the record. We, we click on the track. First of all, you want to click on the track you want to record enable. Then you click record and it will record enable that track. So that was almost there. Let's see, there were a couple of wrong notes for sure. Let's see. So we got the ACE right here. We accidentally brought we accidentally played an EGB, which was one shifted up, so we just drag it down to. And so on and so forth. And now you can hear how it sounds together. We'll quantize it too. Why, why not? Select all the notes, quantize. Quantize is just to um, make sure they all line up together. Exactly. And that it could be desired or undesired, depending. How do you do that? You so click the, the Q right here where under time quantize, uh, eighth note. And the value of the note depends on how fast you're playing compared to, compared to the actual click track. Um, so the, the, the click track is going uh, da, da, da. And my thing is da, da. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, there's eight for every single four beats. And really what, I mean, this kind of hurts my brain a little bit to think about. So I oftentimes, I'll just take my best guess at what the quantized value is. And if it sounds really off, I'll try a different quantized value. Generally, the quantized value will be eighth notes, 16th notes, or maybe even quarter notes. If you have one, one way to think about it is if you have one note per beat, then you want to do quarter notes. If you have two notes per beat, you want to do eighth notes. If you have four notes per beat, you want to do quantized at 16th notes. So it makes sense. It just you need to implement it based on your ideas. And sometimes one part of your passage will be quantized, should be quantized to 16th notes, and another part of your passage should be quantized to eighth notes. And that's very easy to do. You just select, um, for instance, if I see this big blob and it's just one note. Let's see. So right here is a good example of where, let's see, um, then again you can do this all by hand too, but I'm trying to simulate an, a, an example where things didn't quite line up the way you, you, we'd want it to. So you can see right here on B12, right here, this uh, this beat isn't exactly where we want it to be. Uh, we'd like it to be on this downbeat. So we can either drag it back to this marker right here, or this point right here, or we can click quarter note. The notes are selected, mind you. Click quantize, and bam, those notes are where we want them to be. So that's just kind of a cleanup function. 
And um, so what we have now is a drum line, a drum beat, a bass line, and some basic chords. At this point, we might think that the chords are too busy. Uh, we could play one chord per measure instead of having this rhythm of bum, 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 bum. We could just have bum, bum. There's lots of possibilities. But what we can do is instead of deleting what we've done, we can just drag it somewhere else and use it later. So I'll trim this a little bit, and I'll try that one more time. Record that with a little bit less information. Instead of playing all the notes of the chord, we're meaning the bottom, middle, and the top, you could just play the bottom and the middle note. Sometimes less is more. So I'll drag this back. So I basically played the bottom two notes of the chord, and I well let's, let's listen back. So I was playing the chords, but I was also implementing some of the scales that we were talking about earlier too. You can see right here. It goes, the chord moves up a little. You can see that the notes, one of the chord tones moves up and down the notes of the scale. So you can combine these two different aspects of theory. You can create something that's either very static or something that's more dynamic. And that's the fun of it. You know, just, just experiment and see what happens. And uh, you don't want to be you don't want to be so strict by the books that you know you'll get you get something very prescribed, it'll come off that way to the listener or viewer. So I thought that was pretty good. Uh, I'll see how this comes out. I think I think I need to quantize this a little bit. I'll quantize this based on, you know, maybe ba based on eighth notes. I'll quantize this whole thing based on eighth notes. OK, delete this last bit because that was wrong. And you can drag, you can scroll through the MIDI editor like such. So let's see. Let's see how this sounds. Let's duplicate some of the other existing drums. Maybe let's add some fills to this second drum track just to create a little more excitement. You can also raise, raise the amount of rel drums that are occur within the pattern. For instance, you could raise the amount of hi hats. That occur, which is pretty interesting. Or you can arrange, you could raise the number of kick and snare. Uh, you can also adjust the complexity or simplicity of the drum track, which is pretty interesting. So the louder the softness. So let's let's just look at this drum track really quickly and see what this demands according to the bass. Let's make it really soft and see how that sounds like. Soft but complex. Let's see what com soft but complex sounds like. Soft but simple. We also added some fills in there. You hear the da -da -da at the very end. So this is actually a very good tool. Um, that you could use in conjunction with the part of the video that you're trying to edit if you if there's you know if it's kind of a mellow part of the, the film you probably don't want to put it on loud and complex it'll you'll you'll get a very bold piece and that's not necessarily what you want um, let's see if we raise the hi hats a little bit and let's put it back let's put the complexity simplicity loud soft 
thing back in the middle. And let's just raise the hi-hats all the way to the top. You get a lot of high energy with the hi-hats. <laughs> cool um, let's raise the kick and snare that's really active you can also add some hand percussion or percussion you can select which percussion instruments you want to include you can select which instruments you want to include in general uh, if you want a lot of cymbals oh yeah you can select oh you want a lot of toms certainly Add the toms. So there's lots of flexibility in changing uh, the sound and the notes. Um, then you get into the realm of audio effects. Which, which are you going to do for us? No singing? Just kidding. <laughs> so, the audio effects are here somewhere. Yeah, okay. So, in the drop down menu where it says volume, you could change the volume to control something else, like uh, ambience. Basically, all of these little, this line right here that you could select, move up and down, is basically these, the automation lines. You could change the relative amount of the volume in this, in this case. But you could add chorus to it instead, which isn't uh, necessarily a bad idea. You know, thicken the sound a little bit. So, let's see. Automation. Okay, so the automation line is here. Now you can also let's see. This is what it sounds like with a little more chorus. You can have, you can have fun with it. I'm not really happy with some of these syncopations. It quant sometimes quantization doesn't do what you want. So, ba, 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 ba. let's see. I'm going to go back to the piano really quickly. Okay, I wanted that, that A to come in a little sooner. So I'm going to shift, I'm going to nudge this back a little bit. Bum, 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 instead of bum, bum, bum. Have a good oral image of what you want, and you'll be able to translate it. So I highly recommend singing or tapping along, because that's really the way you get the desired outcome, to actually have something to base off to, to start with. So let's see. Yeah, that's more syncopated. So I want this one to come a little bit earlier, instead of to be, I don't want this one to be syncopated. Syncopation is basically taking something that's on a strong beat and nudging it either before the strong beat or after the strong beat, which is uh, up to you. What's the strong beat? The strong beat is basically what these big numbers have, are. These eights, these nines, these tens, the these... The beginning of the, yeah, the... The measure, yeah. Or, um, let's see, if we go to nine... You see how it says 9 and then it says 9.3? It says 10, 10.3, 11, 11.3. Though 9.3 means it's the third beat of measure 9. 10.3 means it's the third beat of measure 10. It, uh, you could increase the resolution of this and see all the smaller beats. 9.2 would be the second beat. Um, so, before I had this little chord right here on the second beat, or in between the first and second beat of measure 11, I wanted this to be on 
the strong beat of measure 11. And a simple way to think about what the strong beat is, if you were clapping along to this, Now, if you wanted something like one, two, three, four, ah, uh, two, two, three, four, ah, uh, one, two, three, you wanted things to happen right before or right after, then you get into the land of syncopation. Now, it takes some syncopations to get exactly what you want. <laughs> but it's okay, it can be done. But it's all based on what you want. So I think I just wanted a little bit of syncopation, I don't want to. I wanted this one to be a little syncopated. So I'm going to move this a little earlier. And you get. Yeah. If you, if you don't syncopate enough, the, the composition comes out a little square. You want a little bit of syncopation, otherwise, everything will just be very rigid, unflexible. So it's sometimes the wrong timings actually end up benefiting the piece because you end up getting interesting results. So it really comes with experimentation. But going back to the chorus effect, you can see how it kind of warmed up, warmed up the sound. Warmed up the sound. You notice how there's little points here that you can drag to increase or decrease the effect based on how vertical or based on how high or low on the y-axis you drag the point. Can you play a measure two of the text? Sure. So here is... Um, I'll just duplicate this entire thing and control V. And you can hear how it sounds with no chorus. And then you can hear how it sounds with chorus. And basically, if you want to create a break point, it's what they call um, to adjust where, where you want to adjust the automation or where you want the automation to change, you just double click on the line. Um, that has the automation, which started out at zero because there was no chorus effect to begin with. But now I'm just, I created a couple of breakpoints and then I'm going to create, I'm going to increase the chorus effect on the second time this clip occurs. And we can hear the difference. No chorus, chorus. of material that shouldn't have happened, but you could still hear how the um, <coughs> it warmed it up. A chorus is, is essentially, um, it, it's like the word implies. It's like a chorus. You take, you take the original audio and you layer on more audio, but you detune some of the other audio, like a chorus would be, where everyone's not singing exactly in pitch with one another. And the end result is it sounds more organic, like there's many people many instruments doing this. Okay, we got to wrap up in about five minutes. So okay. Any conclusions? Conclusions. Or uh, anything you have left out? Uh, so you've kind of, you've kind of increased. So, so you've kind of, we've kind of massified as there, it's actually, it's an actual word, massification. You've kind of massified this to, to become more dense. But, you know, the, the, the visual uh, component of this of the story probably won't have one arc. It might have multiple arcs. So you might want to actually remove elements at some point. Um, so if we duplicate this entire clip. Whoops. So essentially you could, change, you could create a theme and then change the instruments and the tempo. Yes. So they have variations in the theme. Yes. Yeah, if you want to create a theme, you want to create a melody, you wouldn't want to go with the scales. I mean, you wouldn't want to go with the chords, you'd want to go with the scale. So I guess I could create a melody really quickly if that. Um, so let's see. And uh, copy. Oh, oops. OK. 
Okay. So let's create another track. New track. And let's select maybe synthesizer. Be a bell. Chimera bell. Be a delicate bell. Maybe lower the volume. Use the scale. You just uh, a good a good thing to do with the melody is remember how we the bass line we had was basically a sequence of notes where you started out with a note, you went down a fifth, you went down another fifth, you went down another fifth. Well, create with when creating a melody, you want to create a mo motive, a very distinct thing. So maybe like this can be part of the melody. That can be part of the melody, and then you can just take whatever you had and just sequence it down. So let's see how it sounds with um, this. Let's record. Oops. Oh yeah, it's counting in. Somewhat of a mel melodic idea, um, and you use bells. They're kind of they don't compete with any of the other frequency ranges that we've already established. Uh, keyboards are kind of in the middle. Bass is on the lower end of the spectrum. Drums are <coughs> everywhere. So that would need to be quantized and adjusted accordingly but you have something. Um, I like to include melodies in ambient background tracks. I don't like to make the melodies too intense or complicated because then they kind of compete with the narrative on screen. Something simple will suffice. Create some, add some, leave some space in your melody. You, need to, you don't need to do none of that. And um, I guess that's, I mean, I think that's probably it. I, I gotta go to class. Okay. Anybody have any questions? That was cool. Thanks. Do you, you could do like a wrap up. Sure. Like me rapping? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, okay, wrap, wrap up? Yeah. So, as you can see, GarageBand is quite a powerful software. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, and just have fun and experiment and you'll be on your way to making music in no time.